is this squad with Australia, US, uh, Japan, is it for the gram, for the op, photo op, or do you think there's something more substantial here in addition to joint patrols becoming a what new normal in the West Philippine Sea? Well, uh, you know, if you compare it to the quad, in the quad you have uh, one party there, India, that has no uh, defense treaty with the U.S. Here in the squad, all the parties have a defense treaty with the U.S. And uh, so this is more, uh, this is actually the the more uh, substantive uh, uh, grouping uh, as far as the South China Sea is concerned. But if you look at the larger Indo-Pacific, well, uh, you really need India with you if you if you want to cover the entire Indo-Pacific. Yeah, my understanding with India is that, of course, there's a lot of tension and disappointment with them. I mean, the Indians are very clear. This is all about their own great power moment, right? And I remember when I I, I, said, I asked some Munich Security Conference, the quad panel there, uh, is this the Asian NATO? Obviously, it's not. But, you know, just to provoke discussion, see Jai Shankar, they're, they're very outspoken foreign minister. In fairness, dapat ganun sana si Harry Roque, yung parang Jai Shankar type ni Modi. Yeah. He went out and said, no, we are here just, you know, essentially saying alliance of convenience. Ito. This is not mm -hmm. a treaty alliance. We work where it serves us. Mm -hmm. And alam natin, India, Russia, Bromans, Beshi. Mm -hmm. uh, China, ingat sila kasi may border disputes din sila and they don't want to get into fight with China mm -hmm. anytime soon kasi may mga concerns din sila. So the Philippines, although mas malit sa India and all of that, it looks like a much more aligned country, hindi lang treaty ally, but in terms of values, orientation, China position, right? So this looks like a more SWAC quad for dealing with China because I know naturally people say, what about South Korea? And they, I'll say, what about North Korea, right? Ang laki ng problema na South Korea sa North Korea, ibig sila dun eh. At least the Philippines, kahit mas mahina tayo sa India and Korea, military-wise, we can be very helpful. And speaking of which, how do you read these balikatan exercises? We had an exercise in Cagayan where we essentially simulated China taking over Batanes or Mavulis mm -hmm. or something like that and taking it back. I mean, clearly the Philippines is leveraging its geography, right? And we're really preparing for a Taiwan contingency. Well, I, I think uh, we, we also have to show to China that we are not helpless, we are not defenseless. And uh, this is it. I mean, where the Americans brought in their Typhoon missiles, and uh, it's, a, it's a message to China that... Uh, the missiles from the Philippines could reach them. Uh, I think it's a, a matter of messaging. And of course, uh, we, have our, right. we have our Brahmos already. Uh, that would cover the Spratlys, uh, but uh, uh, that that won't. Uh, those missiles won't reach the Chinese mainland. But this uh, Typhoon class of missiles will reach the the mainland. So it's a powerful signal. And and what do you think about the whole high Mars exercises, sea stars sinking a ship? I mean, there were also exercises in South China, and for the first time, nakaroon ng drills outside the twelve nautical miles territorial sea natin, and also France joining in. And the French are about to start their negotiations over a reciprocal access agreement. How do you see those exercises going? How well, are they? Yeah, I'm 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 very in favor of them because once. Uh, they conduct naval drills in our exclusive economic zone in the West Philippine Sea. They're actually telling China that under the arbitral award, this is the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines, and there is freedom of navigation, including naval drills. And that's exactly what we're doing. So in fact, they are enforcing the arbitral award. It's For me, it's the most tangible enforcement of the arbitral award because you're using warships to say that this is the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines per the arbitral award. So, that, and that there's no nine dash line. Yeah, and that yeah. nine-dash line is nonsense, that we don't follow yes. nine-dash line. Kasi nasa loob ng nine-dash line yung exercises eh. And walang pakingan yeah. trans, go pa rin. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly the, the message being sent, that your nine-dash line doesn't exist. And you think, uh, Justice, we should do this every year na, more regular? Yes, we uh, should. We oh, should. ito na dapat talaga. It, it should be done so that it becomes routine and it will sink into the minds of everybody that that is really the exclusive economic zone of the Philippines because they keep on invoking the arbitral award and that's to our benefit. And and last point, uh, uh, Justice, on this. Um, first of all, what is your read of the Marcos administration foreign policy so far along these lines? 
are we doing what would have had happened had anyone aside from Duterte won 2016? In a sense that kung si Grace po yung president or Maro has, be nice, debate natin yan. Um, parang ito yung gagawin nila, di ba? I mean, what we're seeing yes, now the, the, in 2024 should have been what happened in 2017, right? That's correct. This is really the logical uh, move because once you have the arbitral award, then you should press uh, your advantage already. Ask the allied countries to join you in joint patrols because that's the most robust enforcement of the arbitral award. And uh, China couldn't do anything. China is totally helpless when the naval powers of the world conduct naval drills in area where they claim it is their national territory. Remember, everything within the Tendas line, China says it's their national territory. So can you just imagine uh, U.S. and European warships and we ourselves conducting naval drills in what China considers to be their national territory? It's a really a uh, big uh, slap on their face. And they couldn't do anything. And you think if if we have this RAA, reciprocal assets agreement, the French... With the Japanese, baka we're looking at regular joint drills, in the lang patrols in the 200 North Yes, yeah, we need those. We have to really to strengthen our alliances because that's all we've got right now. As we build up our a credible self-defense force, we must rely on alliances. Even when we have the credible self-defense force, we must still strengthen our alliances because you're facing a, a huge a country, a, a nuclear armed country with the largest navy in the world, largest uh, coast guard in the world, largest submarine force in the world. So how do you fight a, a country like that? You just have to get allies. Uh, Justice, so we're about to end this episode, but I, I'll have one question also about uh, something in, more inspirational. But what do you think Marcos should do in the coming years? What should be the next logical step? So you said what he's doing right now is what any logical president not named Duterte would have done anyway. So there's nothing genius about what Marcos is doing. Let's be absolutely clear, because I think some people are going gaga. Oh, Marcos Jr. is such a genius. No, he's not. He's just doing what any self-respecting <laughs> Filipino leader should have done. Tama naman si BBM dun sa speech sa Australia, di ba? Sabi niya, yeah. what I'm doing is not my preference. It's what my people want. More like what any people, any <laughs> self-respecting people want. But what should be done eh, looking forward in the next well, few years? The, the the most critical thing that we should do is to get the gas in Reed Bank. That is really the most critical thing because we we our economy will be devastated if we have to import LNG. It will be very expensive. Uh, foreign locators here will transfer because they cannot compete. Uh, so that is really the uh, the crux of the matter. All of this uh, uh, all of this. Uh, dangerous maneuvers, it's really pointing to Reed Bank. Can we get the gas in Reed Bank? If we can, then it doesn't matter if China doesn't recognize our EEZ because at bottom, the bottom line is uh, the, the country that gets the gas wins because that's, that's uh, the wealth of the exclusive economic zone. So we have to get the gas. Otherwise, we're in, in big, deep trouble. Yeah, I just have a question because I was talking to Jay also about this. Um, Sinuk of China was supposed to be involved in uh some uh, joint exploration uh, service contract. Yes. Service. Yes. So Sinuk companies involved. There's a there's an Australian British one, right? Uh, there's no, no, the, so Anik well, involved in Reed Bank. Well, uh, the MOU that was signed by Duterte uh, says uh, that uh, the. Chinese will participate through the service contract system of the government. We have issued a service contract to Reed Bank, uh, service contract 72, in favor of Forum Energy. So Sinuk will enter into a contract with Forum Energy. It will be uh, Sinuk that will be the subcontractor of uh, Forum Energy to get the gas. And that was supposed to be the template for the entire South China Sea. Uh, China will get maybe 30% or 40% of, the of revenue everybody's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for, for doing the hard work of getting the gas, spending money for getting the gas. They get 40% of the profit. And that will apply uh, South China Sea wide. Imagine if China will get 40% of all the oil and gas in the South China Sea. That's a win, big win, win for them. Win-win, yeah. I mean, that's the win-win. 
That's a win-win. That's the win-win. But at the last minute, China said, you remove that provision in the service contract, which says that the oil and gas belongs to the Philippines. Remove that provision that Philippine law will govern. And because of those two demands, uh, uh, we just said, oh, sorry, we cannot violate yeah. our constitution. They were too greedy. They were too greedy. They yeah, wanted they too, much. Too, greedy. too much. Yeah, too much. Yeah. So that means they have bad diplomacy. They don't know how to take the win, as Biden would put it. Take the win, right? Take the win. Wag mong pilitin. Don't make it worse, right? And that's what they did. Bin nila. But going back to what we said, paano mo naman si ng China? E kung yung president natin was acting like a governor of their province, right? If you what? have such a sabog president, and sa tingin mo mananalo naman si BBM, and tingin nila man nila kay BBM, it's not too different from the Gong. <laughs> back then, I cannot blame China. <laughs> yeah, well, they thought that they they could buy off our our leaders. I mean, that's their modus operandi. But uh, for BBM, I mean, uh, he will become very unpopular if uh, we cannot get the gas in Red Bank, while Malaysia is able to get their gas, Indonesia is able to get their gas, and we have to import very expensive LNG. We'll have high inflation. Uh, we will have un high unemployment. And uh, the you know prices will go up. It's it it will be terrible. Yeah, I mean, again, let me disagree with you vehemently, Justice. I think <laughs> China is correct to think that they can buy politicians. The question is, can they keep those politicians <laughs> once they bought them? I think that's what you know. Hindi nila nakita para akala nila. Eto na yan yung palay. Hindi medyo mahirap to. Mahirap. Something. <laughs> maintenance ang wala sila no um again di umanoy we we're, we're not saying anything pero malapit na ma-expel yung ambassador nila tuloy-tuloy ito um just a question wala pang update kay Sir Kibuloy every week gawin natin yan <laughs> update ano marita sa Davao Justice Carvio wala pa rin Kibuloy well uh, it looks like uh, he's still in hiding uh, uh but i think uh, they will have to produce him because uh you know, they will, the PNP will be the laughing stock if they can. <laughs> yeah, they have to produce him. Because, paano mo mauhulin si Digong pag may warang to para sa Kung ito nga, hindi mo mauhuli-huli. Um, <laughs> Justice Carpe, so, I'm, I'm trying to do something like Ezra Klein of New York Times, which is, do you have recommendations of readings and your own works na pwede basahin ng mga tao? In, uh, so, Jay actually recommended A Rizal a Century Hence. And I was just reading it the other night, and it's so imp inspiring and interesting. And the German geo uh, traveler, he also... Um, uh, nandun sa excerpt sa opening of, of the essay, um, he predicted that U.S. will be the dominant power here in part of the world together with China and Russia and all of that. So, fascinating, fascinating read. I really suggest you guys read it. And marami siyang sinasabi na, sinabi niya in a sense na, if only we Filipinos can go beyond our tribalistic dissensions and all and be a unified country, dapat kinik out na natin yung mga Espanyol 1600 pa lang, di ba? <laughs> but if we're just gonna be okay with who's the less, latest or... Uh, uh, if if the if the neck is used to the yoke, as he put it, very poetically, walang forever na tayong ganyan. E, ikaw, ano yung mga inspiring works you go back to? Whether it's illustrados, whether it's someone else, whether it's international law luminaries, and also some of your works, um, Justice Scarpio. Of course, I know about your book. Thank you for the copy, fantastic mm -hmm. copy you gave me. But for people who want to know more about West Philippines and these issues, ano dapat babasain nila? Just... The uh, internationalists. Uh written by uh, lawyers uh, who teach international law. And uh, th their principal uh, uh, theory is that international law can prevent wars, can save the world. And we have, that's, in fact, that's the only way we can prevent a third world war. That's why, uh, you know, the before the 1945 uh, UN Charter, the rule in international law was might is right. If you have a dispute with your neighbor, with your neighboring country, you you go to war, you win, you get their territory, and that's valid. I mean, you can be the aggressor, but if you win, what you did was correct, and you the are right rewarded. right to colonization. I, yeah. mean, I saw that in the Spanish writers. Sorry, if, if I'm being a little bit pushy. I can see there's a Rizal here. Um, I want to ask you, I, I was reading about Pedro Paterno, and Pedro Paterno was a lawyer by training, right? He would cite some things about international law. Are you familiar with any legitimate international legal arguments from the Filipino illustrados 
against itong right to colonization or the Philippines' right to self-determination. I, I'm sorry, I was just thinking if you're legally geeky and historically geeky, pakabalikan mm. mo some of this work. Sorry, sorry, Justice, I'm pushing you on this. I know... Anyway, it, it, well, Apolinario Mabini was, uh, was a yes. lawyer. Yes, <laughs> And, uh, and uh, he was, of course, the author of the Malolos Constitution. And uh, he, 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 he understood international law. Uh, but uh, going back to what I was saying, the uh, the when uh, the framers of the 1945 Constitution uh, were drafting the Constitution, they realized that they had to change the rule. The might is right, which was the rule since the dawn of human civilization up to 1945. They said, if we continue with this rule, might is right the world will end because we already have the nuclear bomb with the nuclear bomb you cannot afford a rule where might is right if you have a territorial dispute you go to war whoever wins uh, is awarded the territory you cannot have that kind of a uh, rule when there is there are nuclear bombs because that will mean the end of humanity the, that's the end of human civilization. So the two fundamental principles of the UN Charter are this. All disputes between states must be settled peacefully by negotiation, mediation, arbitration. And the use of force or the threat of force is outlawed, prohibited. Because of that, for the last 79 years, we did not have a third world war. But Russia now is overturning that using force, actual invasion to get the territory of uh, Ukraine. So they are use, uh, they're going to war to settle a territorial dispute, which is a no-no. So if they win and they succeed that, they succeed in getting the territory of Ukraine, that will be the end of the United Nations Charter. And in, the, in Asia, China is using threat of force to grab the territory and maritime zones of its neighbors. So these two countries are trying to overturn the legal order because the UN Charter says the use of force and the threat of force is outlawed. But both of these countries, Russia is using actual force. Absolutely. China is using threat of force. So uh, we have to understand that we are in a in a critical point in human uh history that if Russia and China succeed in overturning the existing uh, rules-based order under the UN Charter, then what will happen? That's a very good point. Is this the book uh, by uh, Ona Hathaway and Shapiro? How a radical plan to outlaw war remade the world the internationalist. I mean, I'm just wondering. I think yes, yeah, um, yeah, I think you you it, you're it looks amazing. Yeah, this looks thank yeah. you so much, Justice. I'll definitely check this. I think the role of international law is is very underappreciated in, in our uh let's say pedestrian discourse, sometimes even in policy discourse. So I really suggest people to check it out. I mean, I also see the relevance of that because there were some people who are trying to use the Dresden bombings. German bombings to justify a recent war in the Middle East, you know what? And someone said, actually, that's why we created international law after World War II, so that you don't go bomb the whole city of another mm -hmm. country because they killed some of your people. It doesn't work that way. So I think they, the, inter, they, the, uh, the contribution of international law is, is very important. And the reason I, I'm glad you mentioned Mabini, and to a certain I also mentioned Paterna, among others, is that we are a nation of world-class lawyers, not in terms of just lawyers who are good in making money or you know, presidential spokesman one day, ex-human rights one day. You no, know, people who use lawfare to protect the interests of smaller countries. So thank you so much, Justice Carver. It looks like this is the kind of, uh, this is kind of like your life legacy, right? I mean, this <laughs> be the man who puts his might behind what is right, right? I mean, I, I don't want to be sentimental, but I am a sentimental person, Justice Carver. It looks like that's your animating um, uh, force, right? And I, uh, that's the idea animating your actions. Yes, well, well, we don't really have a choice. Uh, we are fighting China nuclear armed with the largest naval naval fleet in the world and largest sub submarine force, largest uh, coast guard. The, we will lose definitely if we go toe to toe with uh, with China in the in the south to a forum where there's a level playing field, and that level playing field is the arbitral tribunal. 
Yeah, I mean, thank you for mentioning that. I mean, kiboloy na lang, hindi natin mahuli uli yung China pa. But, but thank you, Justice Car. I, I was hoping to end on a more hopeful note, but nevertheless, I am very stoic like you. I'm, I'm like, do what is right regardless of the results. So we have to fight the good fight. Bear and forbear. Thank you so much, Justice Carpi. Mabuhay ka. And, and as, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm, I'm going back to you every weekend. So, but, but I'm not sorry because I think your, your views are very important and I need the Marites on Kibuloy and the Vow every other week. So hopefully we can have you back soon and hopefully even more, Pakulo, to discuss. Of course, anytime. I'll be happy uh, with Jordan. My pleasure. And I think our, our supporters, I mean, and mga comments here, and daming natutuwa, natatawa at the same time dun sa discussions natin. Justice Carby, mabuhay ka. Have a lovely weekend and a blessed Sabbath day. Uh, on Sunday, okay. of course. God bless. Thank you. Good night.